in this video we're going to take a pretty exhaustive look at the volume envelope okay so this is where we can actually define the volume characteristics of a sound according to time and the two key interactions with the synthesizer are when we push our key down and then when we let go of the keys so if you look at the midi clip here you can see i've got a very short note here and the clip itself is running for two bars have a listen So you can hear a sound that plays and fades down pretty quickly. That's because of the settings that I have on the envelope at the moment. What I want to do is for you to actually see what this looks like as a waveform as well. So on this audio track, I'm gonna set the audio from and choose the analog. So this is gonna be coming from the analog now. I'm gonna push record enable and I'm just gonna record an audio clip now so you can see what that sound looks like. So there we go. So you can see the fade down after the sound has been triggered. As I said, this is a very short sound, okay? Now, what's happening at the moment, uh, the reason why it looks as it does is because of the settings on the volume envelope. So let's come back onto that analog. Let's take a look. If you click underneath the amp here, you can see that we've now got a new section. And if you have a second oscillator, it would be in the area down here for amp two. So amp one is basically dealing with the volume of the sound. And you can see over here, we've got different settings that we can use. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you something. I'm gonna take my sustain level to maximum. And I'm gonna come back to this, but I wanna show you how things could look quite different on the clip. This was a short note, I'm gonna extend it. So let's stop this clip over here. Let's have a listen to what this sounds like now. I'm going to extend it even more. Let's take it maybe here. Now you can hear that we've got a constant level for a certain period of time and then the sound fades down. So I'm going to push record here and we're going to see what it looks like on the audio clip. So there is what we would class as a sustained section. So the level is the same and then it fades down afterwards. Let's come back onto the synthesizer and look at the volume envelope. This is pretty much reflecting what we see in this display here. Okay, and this visual approach to the envelope is actually really handy when you're actually working with sound because a lot of the time it will match up to be very similar to the shape of the waveform that you've got that you're creating. So let's just go through these parameters so you can understand some of this stuff. The first parameter on a volume envelope is the attack. So how long does it take for the volume to fade up to the maximum level once you've pushed your keys down? So if I come back to my MIDI clip, this point at the left is when I push my key down. That's a note on. So how long does it take for it to bring the volume up to the maximum once I've pushed that key down? So back onto analog over here. Let me just do the same as we've got at the moment, but with a slower attack. And you can see the values here, these are in milliseconds. Once you go above a thousand milliseconds, it turns into seconds. So these are pretty long. So I'm gonna do a fade up here. And let's do that about 500 or so. And let's compare to what we had before. So taking a look, we can now see that there is a fade in at the beginning of the sound. It's then at the sustain level. For as long as the note is held down, then when the note off occurs, it fades down afterwards with the release. So the attack, how long does it take for the sound to go to maximum level once you push your key down? Now the next one is the decay. And this interacts directly with the sustain level. So the level that we were at before was maximum. That's why it looked like it was right at the top. I'm gonna reduce this now, and we're gonna have a decay for about 500 milliseconds, so it's half a second either side, down to a sustained level, and then it's gonna fade down with a release. So have a look at this one. Now you can see, 
just going to increase the vertical size of this, that we have the fade up from the attack, then we fade down with the decay, a sustained level, and then we have the fading down afterwards with the release. So the decay is how long does it take to fade down to the sustain level? Just to show you, I'm going to take the sustain level even lower. So there's a really dramatic difference. Let's record this one in. So you could hear there that it was quieter. You can see it as well. So we're really getting control in shaping the actual envelope. Let me go for a faster attack. Take this all the way over here. You can see that we go to the maximum level, then what's happening is we're fading down with the decay time down to the sustain level, which is very, very low, carries on, and then when we let go, there's a fade down at the very end. So coming back onto analog, just a recap, the attack, how long does it take for the sound to reach the maximum volume? Decay, how long does it take to go down to the sustain level? Now, if your sustain level is max, then you don't have anything happening with the decay because it has nowhere to go to. It's already the maximum level and it stays at the maximum level. So when your sustain is up here at the top, don't worry about decay. So just taking it down, decay, how long does it take to go down to the sustain level? When you hold the key down and keep it held down without letting go, it stays at this level until the point when you let go of the key, which is where it's going to fade down with the release. So we'll take a look at some different release settings. Let me take this to maximum here. So we're going to do this now. Let's take a look at the actual clip and I'm going to reduce this. Let's take it maybe about this. I'm going to see how that sounds. I'm going to stop the clip over here. Yeah, there we go. In fact, do you know what I'm going to do? We've covered the sustain. So we just want to get something really, really short here to demonstrate this. That's good. Now I'm going to take the release sh really short here. There we go. You hear that? And I'm going to take the actual MIDI note length shorter too, because I really want to illustrate this release for you guys. There we go. Right, so short release time. Let's record this in. Let's take a look. So you can see here, very, very short. At the moment, it's zoomed in quite a way, really. I want to just give you some bearing against the other ones. So I'm going to record for a longer period of time. So there you go, you're gonna get a better comparison visually compared to the waveforms we had before. So that's very, very short. So I'm gonna extend the release now. So release, let's take it longer. So this is just literally gonna be a fade down. Let's take it to about five seconds, somewhere around there. So it's really going up to the next note there, isn't it? You can see that. So that's just tapping the sound very quickly. So no sustain. It's going right down to the release straight away, all the way down. So the release is basically how long does it take for the sound to fade down to silence once you've let go of the keys. That's the two key interactions, the note down and a note up on the MIDI keyboard. And that's what we use in synthesis for sound design, using synthesizers. The MIDI keyboard or the note on, note off is always gonna be there. And the volume envelope is what you use for shaping the volume of the sound over time. So the analog is there. Let me just show you if we take this one away and instead have the operator. We've got here on the first oscillator, there are four oscillators that we can use. The first oscillator, has its own volume envelope. We've got exactly the same parameters here. And we have four individual envelopes here. So for each oscillator, you can switch between these by clicking. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit of variety so you can tell that they're different. So there we go. Let's put a fade in on here. And let's take a longer release on this one. So you can see those contrasting envelopes. So four individual volume envelopes, one for each oscillator on the operator.
At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor. He downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.